to say a special thank you to Elephus for sponsoring this video. Elephus has a wide range of lighting fixtures that are sure to fit any of your decorative needs. Today I'm using the 16 pack fairy lights in the warm tone and I absolutely love these. The battery pack is so discreet, it makes it easy for decorating and they look beautiful on my mantle. I love it in the garland as well as other areas in the home. If you want to purchase your own lights, then check it out in the link that is the description on this video. Hey everyone, my name is Haley and this is the House for Hosting. Welcome back to my channel and today it's finally time to decorate for Christmas. I'm not sure when you pull out your tree, but for me, I like to get mine out as soon as I possibly can. And lately, life has just been really hectic and I've been really busy. And so I'm getting my tree out a little bit later than I like, but it's still well before Christmas. So I keep reminding myself, it's okay. Anyways, today is the day that I am finally decorating. Now, I actually have four trees. I have my main tree in the living room, which I've started, and then I have a tree in my foyer, and then each of my kids, or both of my kids, only have two. Both of my kids have a tree in their room. So, all together, I have four that I'm gonna be decorating and putting together. And this year, I'm trying to do it a little bit differently. I'm gonna experiment and see what I think is the fastest way to get four trees up. There is no fast method. I feel like it still takes several days, but usually I will do one tree at a time. I will put it up, decorate it, and fully finish that tree before I move on to the next one. And this year, I think I'm gonna go ahead and get all my trees out and like fluff them and prep them and have them just ready to be decorated and then decorate one by one. So, I don't know. When I post this video, I will let you know at the end how that turned out. That's my plan right now. So first, I have the big main tree in my living room and this is actually a 12 foot tree. So I got it last year, it's my second year with it. I really like it. And I also made my own little, you can't see it at this angle, but I will show you, I made a tree collar, like a box wooden tree collar to go around the base of it. And I like how that turned out. So anyways, this is gonna be my holiday video of Christmas decorating. So I hope that y'all will enjoy it. Don't forget to click subscribe and stay tuned. So let's get right into the video. So I wanna start off and let you know that you will see several outfit changes throughout this video. Like I said, it took me several days to get all of the decorations out and up and how I wanted. Plus life has just been really hectic lately and it's been pretty crazy. So it's taken me a while to get this video together. If you saw on the community page, I posted that our heat went out which is just lovely because it came in the perfect time. I mean, we've had lows in the 20s at night and now our heat is out. So pray for us. But anyways, I'm doing my best to get this video done and put out because I still want to share all of my holiday decorating and my trees. I really love this time of the year and I'm trying to still be positive even though I feel like things have been pretty crazy right now. I'm just trying to shift my perspective and have a better outlook and remain thankful and positive. So I'm starting by fluffing the branches and when I fluff my branches, I just kind of like pull them apart and separate them. I have some branches going up and some going down and then some to the side. The goal is to make the tree look fuller and kind of fill in any empty spots because you want it to look as realistic as possible. So I go around the whole tree and I do this process and then later when I add my ribbon and ornaments I can tweak it how I need to because sometimes your branches get out of place when you decorate but starting off by doing this is just going to help you create that full look on the tree. I want to give you one tip to keep in mind whenever you're fluffing your Christmas trees wear gloves they can be like cleaning gloves or just latex gloves but you will be so happy with yourself when you pop on a pair of gloves and you're fluffing your branches and your hands are not sticky and itching and just all the mess like I have a flawed Christmas tree and if you have a flawed tree then you know it makes a mess that's part of it but even when you don't have a flawed tree we always get itchy our hands like mine turn red because they're real sensitive so putting on gloves when I'm doing this part of decorating the tree game changer so get you some gloves before you fluff your tree 
So, I just want to give a little side note. I don't know if you're somebody who likes watching these videos, but then you feel kind of let down as if, you know, you haven't started doing the decorating yet or you feel behind schedule. Please don't ever let anything that I post or say or do make you feel that way. I personally do struggle with that as well. A lot of times I will set deadlines for myself and if I can't complete them, I get stressed out and it just makes me get in a bad headspace. And so when I started this channel, I wanted to give inspiration to others and I never want to make anybody feel that way. So I hope that when you watch my channel and you watch my videos, you find encouragement and happiness and just know that life is tough and we have to give ourselves grace and understanding and do everything on our own time. So if you haven't gotten your holiday decorating done yet, do not feel bad. It's not even Thanksgiving, y'all. I mean, I'm just a crazy lady pulling everything out, so don't feel bad. Just kind of laugh. As I said, I have four trees, two that are in my girls' rooms and then the two downstairs, one in the foyer and one in the living room. This one is in my foyer, and it's a nine-foot pencil tree. And I purchased it from Walmart several years ago. I do have it linked in the description of this video. It's flocked as well. I am kind of partial to the flocked trees. I just really love them. I love the look of the fake snow. Yes, they definitely create a mess, but I really like them. And as far as decorating, I feel like it's much easier to decorate a flocked tree because you can just lay the ribbon on and it will stay because it adheres to the flocking off the tree and as far as hanging ornaments i honestly don't even use hooks i just kind of stick my ornaments in place if they have hooks on them i can kind of position it on the branches using that but i don't go out and buy hooks i also wanted to show y'all how i create the bows for my tree toppers and this is also how I made the bows for the banisters on my stairs. It's fairly simple, so I'm hoping that by creating this video, you can recreate these bows yourself. I really like them, and I like how you can layer them, and you can create um, your bows to be as fluffy or as big or as small, however you want it. You can customize it to what you're looking for. So essentially to create these bows, you are just creating your loops and pinching it together in the center. And then with each new loop, you will take your ribbon and kind of twist it so that you can flip it and let the pattern of the ribbon show. If you have a double-sided pattern, that's probably not necessary, but you will be able to tell whenever you're creating the bow if you need to kind of twist it. I will say when you're making these bows, make sure that you have wired ribbon because that's what's gonna allow you to shape it and give it the design that you want. You can create it if you don't have wired ribbon. It's just not gonna stand up how you like. It's gonna be kind of really flat and we don't want that. And then I'm just using my floral wire to wrap it all together and keep it in place. And I like to keep the floral wire pretty long whenever I cut it because that is what I'm gonna use to wrap around the top of the tree or your banister or your garland or wreath or wherever you're putting your bow so you can always go back and trim your wire later so it's better to have more than not enough so I recommend cutting that long I'm creating another bow, but with a smaller ribbon, and I'm gonna use this one as a layering piece that I will later connect to the main bow. I really like to do this and mix in different patterns of ribbon because it just gives more dimension to your bow and helps it look more professional. So if you can mix in a couple different ribbons, 
then definitely give it a try. I think you will really love how your bows turn out. I like to create an extra tail last and add it to the bow because this is going to be longer that will hang kind of down the side of the tree and then it, because it's wired ribbon I can take the ribbon and kind of curl it and shape it. It's just an extra step that you don't have to take but I really like the look of it on the tree. I'm using this for my tree topper so I want it to be pretty fancy and this is just a very easy way to make your tree topper look really fancy and really cute. Once I have my bow finished, I'm adding it to the top of my tree and then fluffing it again. And like I said, I'm curling that ribbon on the side pieces and just positioning them how I want and getting everything to lay how I like. And then once I am satisfied with my bow, I will go in with a few different sprigs and sprays and just kind of push it behind that and position those how I want them as well. Now, this is my tree in my four years, so I didn't go crazy with the topper, but I just wanted it simple and cute. For my main tree in the living room, I have a mixture of just kind of natural colored ornaments. These colors just pair really well with my house, and I've actually had these ornaments and ribbon and spray and all of the things I'm putting in the tree. I have had these for, I think like, eight years now because we are coming up on our seven year anniversary and we got married at Christmas time because I love Christmas and of course I had a massive Christmas tree at my wedding and we used all of these things to decorate the tree and all of the stuff that I had at my wedding so I would say that these decorations I have definitely gotten my money's worth and I'm not mad about it they have held up very well and every year I say I'm going to do a different theme or I'm going to change it and then I pull it out and I'm like, no, I just can't. I love it. I think that it's so classic and timeless and the fact that it's lasted this long and just gone with so many things in my home, I just love it. Plus, if you have gone out and done any shopping for decorations for your tree, then you know how it can become expensive fast. So, the fact that my stuff is still holding up and it works great and I like it, I'm going to keep using it. Again, I am starting with the ribbon and I just cut various lengths and lay it into the tree and because it's a flock tree, I can position it how I want and just kind of bend the wired ribbon and it will stay in place. And then I do my ornaments and last I do the tree topper. Again, this bow literally is the exact same bow that was used as a tree topper at my wedding almost seven years ago which to me, I just, I love that. It means so much to me and it's special when I can pull it out every year as we're coming up on our anniversary. Yes, it needs fluffing and it probably could use being redone, but again, I make it work and then I have a lot more sprays that I stick in the topper of this tree. This is my main tree and it's very tall. It's big, and to me, it's kind of like a showpiece, so I really like to have a big, fancy topper. That's just my preference. I know some people like to do something smaller or star or whatever. I think that they are all beautiful. I love Christmas trees, no matter how they're decorated or even if they don't have anything on them. I just love Christmas, and so I think that the whole point of it is to decorate it how you want it and how you like it because it's in your home and you're the one looking at it. And I personally really like to have a full tree with lots of pretty things on it. And most of this is, if not all, like I said, is things that I have had over the years. And so I really just like incorporating it throughout my tree and in my home. Thank you. 
So I did buy some things for my mantle this year. I went to Kirkland's and I got some beaded garland. This ribbon actually came from Hobby Lobby. And then this is a white flocked garland from Kirkland's. And I just wanted to kind of do something different on my mantle. And I really like how it turned out. So I can't wait for you to see that. But also I used some really cool command hooks that you've probably seen used before. They are cable cord bundlers. And this is like a game changer when you're doing your mantle. Now these are the lights that I use from Olifus that I talked about at the beginning of the video. And y'all these lights let me tell you i have used a lot of battery pack lights before but i absolutely love them this is how the command hooks work you just use the sticky adhesive on the back like normal and then it kind of opens up and it slides and locks in place and you can put essentially there for like cords to wrap up together but we're using it today on the mantle so you can just kind of place your garland on there and then pull the command hook up and lock it in place now I'm doing mine on the top of my mantle. I have seen people do it where it kind of hangs down and they've still used the cord, like bundler thing, the command hook is what I'm trying to say. But um, for me, this has just worked out really well and I have used two of those. I originally purchased mine from Home Depot and they sold out. They only had like two in the store and I tried to get those two, but I could only get one. So I would say, order them probably from Amazon. I actually have them linked in the description of this video and I believe the link is through Amazon. I definitely would say jump on those because those things are going fast. It's like the cat's out of the bag. This is the secret way to hang your garland and you know do decorating if you haven't used them yet. It's a game changer. I'm telling y'all you definitely need to go ahead and get you some because if you have any holiday decorating you're gonna wish you had them. And while we're talking about things that you definitely need, let's talk about this white flocked garland. So I went into Kirkland's and I originally wanted the green version of this garland. I'm not sure if you've seen it, but it's beautiful. It looks very realistic and it lays so good. However, I think everybody knows that because it was completely sold out online and in all the stores and I couldn't find it. So I turned around and I saw the white flocked version of it. And I thought that is so beautiful and so different. And honestly, I like it better than the green. And it's actually on sale. I think it was 22 or 29, I can't remember, dollars a strand. And I just used two strands and it is so pretty. I think it pairs so good with my warm fairy lights from Olifus. I just kind of wind them in and position them how I want. And it's beautiful. I absolutely love how my mantle turned out. I love how small and thin the battery pack is with these lights. I have had several wired lights before and none of them have had a battery pack so small. And I really like that because when you're trying to decorate with the wire lights, the perk of them is that they are pretty lightweight and with the wire you can position it how you want it. But when you have this big, bulky, heavy battery pack that you're like, I don't know what to do with this or how do I hide this part, it makes it difficult to decorate. And with this one, the battery pack is just so small and so thin, it just slides directly underneath my garland and I had it, plus it's white. And again, y'all, we chose the white garland, so it has great. I mean, I can't speak any more highly about it. I really like it, and I love how the lines can be easily positioned and twisted, and I was able to position my lights to align with the garland, how my garland kind of cascades over. My lights look like they are doing that as well. So, like I said, the descript in the description of this video, I have a link for pretty much everything on my mantle. The lights, the command hooks, the garland, and the beaded garland as well.
A really quick hack for your stockings is to take tissue paper or just kind of any other paper that you have and crumble it up and stick it in your stockings. This is gonna let them look more full whenever they are hanging and will keep them from kind of twisting whenever they're on your mantle. Another area that you can use these fairy lights is in lanterns and I really love this trick. So you'll take your wire lights and stick it in a lantern and then fill it up with ornaments and it just gives the most beautiful glow, especially at night whenever you're sitting in, ha in the house and you have the glimmer from your tree and the little lights around the house. I really like this. We did this at my wedding and I've done it in my home several years in a row and I added this to my fireplace as well and it just gives a very easy touch and it doesn't cost a lot of money. For my stairs, I have a lot of railing and so I like to do a garland on top of the handrail and I created this garland last year. Thankfully, I already had ribbon and ornaments and lights on it and it saved very well in the attic so I pretty much just had to pull it out and I used zip ties to attach it to the rails and then I went back and fluffed it. There was one strand that the lights were blown out on but believe it or not, these lights for this garland are the same lights that we used um, on our Christmas decorating for our wedding, which was, like I said, seven years ago. So the fact that I only had one strand that was blown out, again, I am very much impressed. So I did buy one more strand and restrung that string of garland and got that done. But this year I was able to get my garland up much faster. It took me several days last year to get it all together but like I said I love all of the handrails that I have with my stairs and there's no way I couldn't decorate it for Christmas and have lights on it so at night when it's all lit up it's so pretty and especially in the front because you can see it from the road and I really like that. So again, these are the bows that I made for the banisters and I made them last year and I just kind of re-fluffed them and put them on the banisters. This is the same way that I showed you earlier in the video on how to make a bow. Again, I just mix in different ribbon. I think I did like the striped ribbon and then a solid gold for the tail, but I just really like these bows. I think they look so good. So I said I would let you know, and I do think that I enjoyed it better with setting up my trees, all of them, and fluffing them, and then going back and decorating them after I already had them all put together. I think that it took me longer this time just because of everything else I had going on, but all in all, I do think that that was the faster method versus doing one tree at a time. I really hope that y'all have enjoyed this Christmas Decorate With Me. Like I said, it took me a while to get the video together, so I thank you for being patient. As you can see, it took me a while to get all my decorating done, but stay tuned because I will be showing you an outside portion as well. So don't forget to click that subscribe button if you haven't already. Let me know in the comments what you enjoyed the most. And I'm so glad that y'all are here and thank you for joining me. And until next time, I can't wait to do this again. Bye guys.